So DeMonte, welcome to the Share Chair. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> so I'm kind of curious, like what, so what are, I mean, let us get to know you. What, what, is, what are the things you really care about and make you tick and make you excited? And Snowboarding is my big thing. I love doing it. I think about it year round. In the summertime, I would say to my mom, let's go to Colorado. Let's go <laughs> out of the U.S. and go snowboarding somewhere. But I don't know, that's my big winter sport. Something that really makes me tick is just when people are just blatantly disrespectful to somebody. Like, or like, or they're not showing respect to somebody that they're meeting for the first time or something like that. Because I mean, I've gotten weird looks and stuff like that where people don't treat me the way I want them to treat me. But I mean, I guess that's just how it goes. I can't control that. I try to be respectful back, but once respect is lost, it's kind of a battle. You went, you went to Chicago and you kind of did it. Where that was part of a project. Yeah, that, that was you part of the bring, the bring to life project. Yeah. yeah. The curious or the, the curious incident of the dog in the night and the main character took or he has autistic and he took a train to see his mom, and like he figured out times of everything, where everything was, like where he was going, what train was where, and he managed to do it all by himself. Was, he had a rat with, or yeah. a mouse with him, yeah. something like that. That was his little side <laughs> side buddy. And so my partner, Savannah, and I were talking about it. We couldn't really think of anything fun. And she goes, why don't we just take a trip to Chicago, like take a train or something like that. And I was like, oh, smart. Like we can take go down there, figure out trains, like where we're going and all that kind of stuff. And ended up coming down to, we invited two other friends, so we had a good group to go and got a hotel room and had a good time. <laughs> Took a, the trip to Chicago. Yeah. There were people, we'd walk by people and people would give me dirty looks. I had one guy, I'm guessing it's just because I was a little too close to him as I was passing, but he stuck his elbow out and like elbowed me in the chest really hard. Like. I mean, so where do you think, I guess, that come? where do you think that comes from? Like, why do people have that initial feeling of, teenagers or a group you know a group of four so those first impressions what's what do you think's behind those I mean I could see it being as like kids that look like hoodlums or something like that and being kind of like oh like why are they up here in the city like they should be back down or something like that but I don't know it's all on personal opinion and views of people and when I first initially meet somebody or see somebody I'm not I try my best not to just say, oh, this person's this and this, I'm not going to give them the time of day, but I mean, I'll give you a chance to introduce yourself and be friendly, but if you're going to be disrespectful to me, I don't want to take the time to get to know you. Like, it's a, at that point, it's not worth it. February is not only Women's Rights Month, but is Black History Month. And so like leading into just the idea of Black History Month, do you think that those mean looks and that elbow jab has anything to do with racism? I don't think so. Don't think so. No, I think it was just more of the way my. I'm guessing it's probably the way I was dressed or something, but just gave people the wrong vibe yeah. about me at first. So it's that stereotype. Yeah, that's like exactly. Into the brain when it's not. That's not the way that. You exactly. Be. I think that, um, like the world as a whole, that's really broad, could like dispel that stereotype because you're still you can dress however you want. You're right. allowed to dress like that, and that's not something that you should be judged by. There's so many different possibilities to where you can get it fixed, but at the same time, people won't see it the same way. Yeah. So they will they won't accept that it's... What's a way that you would attack that problem, just just personally? Like, I try to just leave it alone. If it, okay. Like, I mean, there was a time, that was a long time ago, a couple buddies and I went to the Dollar General in Spring Lake, and we, there was like, five of us and we all walked in there to go get candy and some chips and the lady stopped us right at the door and she goes uh I don't need all you hooligans in here at one time one or two at a time and that's it and it was kind of like whoa what do you mean hooligans none of us have backpacks we're not in here like you can check my wallet I have money like I'm here to buy something I'm not here to steal from you can't just put the label on me just because there's a bunch of us maybe people could see it a different way if it was just a one-on-one -on -one encounter but mm -hmm. one on five you're gonna see it as the other group there could be something wrong going on you know you're one of Spring Lake's very few black students yeah you've been in Spring Lake your whole uh, I've been life in, uh, I lived in Muskegon and went to two schools in Muskegon for my kinder, no, preschool and kindergarten years. And then first grade we moved to Spring Lake, but I went to Ferry Elementary yeah, in Grand Haven. And then for second and 
third and fourth grade, I went to West Michigan Academy, and then from fifth grade on, I've been at Spring Lake. You've been here. Yeah. So you, you've been here a long time. Yeah. Now you're a senior, and yeah, it's time sure to graduate so. or soon. So oh, yeah. How has it been to be a, a real minority in, a, in a, an almost all-white school? To be honest, I really haven't had any problems. Yeah. I've never had that one kid who ruins my day by saying something racist or making fun of me because of my color or anything like that. I mean, when I first came to Spring Lake in fifth grade, the f like the first day of class, I already had a couple friends just from football because I played on the Mariners, so it was Tri-Cities, and so I knew a bunch of kids from football, and they were all close buddies then, and then I slowly just started gaining more and more friends, and now it's kind of like no one, I, like if anybody does have a problem with me, they don't bring it up, but they don't cause a problem either, so mm -hmm. I mean, really... It's been pretty great since I've been here. So. When we were in class, it was Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Yeah. You said, Mr. Tooney, what do you think about not having the day off for this? Mm -hmm. It was, well, I don't know how much we would do to honor it if we weren't here at right. school, but I'd love to honor it more. But we've done that before, and, you know, to, to who knows what effect. Uh, we, I just wish we would have talked more about him, or not even just him, the whole black history as a whole, because... I mean, first hour senior lecture, we watched a video and then talked about Martin Luther King, and that was it. And then after the rest of the day, no one, like people, teachers would ask, oh, you talk about Martin Luther King today? What class? And it's like, oh, yeah, this class. Oh, okay, now let's begin our lesson. It's kind of like, well, if you bring him up, at least talk something about him, at least like share with the class, like a new information or anything. Mm -hmm. And it just never happened. And then we came here and you played the speech. Yeah. That's always a nice touch. I like the speech. Mm -hmm. When he talks about his children, um, mm -hmm. what's the line? Children will grow up in a world where, what is it? Uh, like little white girls and little black girls and little white boys and little black boys can hold hands. Hold hands, that's what I couldn't But I then there's that school. one, too, those, there's this gorgeous line about, um, in, in that speech about, where my children will be judged on the content, content of their, their character, character and not, not the color, color of the skin. skin. The atmosphere in here just like charged. <laughs> <laughs> Several schools in our county are doing, um, they're still continuing on like weeks, several weeks of like food drives in honor of MLK and also the hundreds of other, more than hundreds, like um, black figures that are so important to right. America. Not just talking about MLK, but other people like, what could schools do throughout the month? Because it's not, it's like Black History Month. Right. Not, you know. Just adding in a simple, like, bibliography. Maybe just throwing in, like, articles here and there about, like, big situations or big problems that happened with the, maybe not famous person, but the African-American that was in the situation. And I don't know, just, there could be a lot more things that could be done just to say something simple about what happened or anything like that. What's the value of awareness? I mean, especially if it's small little things like that, it doesn't always have to be on the biggest people. Like, you can find more facts about, like, I don't know, baseball players yeah. or just any black person in general. What's the plan for the future? What do you I'd love to be an architect. Yeah. I'd love to go to college to be an architect. All right. Well, my mom has done construction. She's a carpenter, she builds bridges, and she's done that since I was like two. And so I've grown up, my grandpa built a barn, like a bunch of my family likes to build things, and I got into it. I built a picnic table out back, and like I built some for Miss Gwinnup, Miss Peterson, Miss Love. I don't know, it's just working on the computers to design it, actually building it, that's, I just love doing it. The hands-on work, that's what it is. Do you have any advice for high school students, for African American people, for um, future architects, for people who just want to go to Chicago? Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any advice in general? Really, I don't want to say, I don't want to tell anybody to change who they are, just be yourself, but at the same time, if you're like in my position, coming to a school where it's majority of white kids, mm -hmm. Have open arms, have open eyes, see what's going on, see how people treat you before you just say, oh, like, I know they're going to treat me bad, I'm just going to shy away from everybody. Just don't expect the bad, always be ready for the good stuff. Thanks, Demonte, yeah. for being on the shared chair. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Share Chair. Stay tuned next week for a new one. Also, check us out on Facebook and Twitter for regular updates at The Share Chair. 
And if you're interested in having a piece of your writing or an experience shared on the podcast, contact Elise McGannon at 203-505 at springlakestudents.org.